All right, my name is Sonia Gleischer, and I'm going to do an approximately nine-step retrosynthesis, starting with this cyclopentane, and we're going to end up with uh, two six-membered rings. So working backwards from the two six-membered rings, we can see that there's a double bond here connecting the two rings. So I automatically think uh, Robinson annulation. So working backwards from here, I'm going to guess that this ring originally had at least a carbonyl here, and then we did some kind of reduction to get rid of that. <clears throat> and then working backwards from there, we know that the Robinson annulation forms a double bond where there was a uh, carbonyl. So I'm going to draw a six-membered ring with a carbonyl where this double bond is, and then we have something like this. And if I added a base to that, it would remove the alpha hydrogens here, which would then attack <clears throat> this carbonyl carbon, um, turning this into an OH group. And then if I followed that with a dehydration, we would end up with this double bond. Uh, but at this point, I don't really know how to get from here to this cyclopentane. So I'm going to try to work forwards a little bit and see if that helps me. And I want to end up with a product that looks similar to this. So going back to my cyclopentane, this has no functionality on it. So my first step is I'm going to do a radical bromination so that I can at least work with this. And I see that this has six carbons, even though it's a five-membered ring. So in order to uh, turn this into a six-membered ring, I'm going to break up this ring, turn it into a chain of carbons, and then turn it back into a ring. So in order to do that, I probably want to turn this into a double bond so that I can use ozonalysis, ozonolysis to break it. All right. So from here, I have a double bond from elimination, and then I'm going to do ozonolysis and turn it, turn it into a nice, long, one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon chain. Here I have a carbonyl on the second carbon, and then this carbonyl would be on the last carbon, giving me an aldehyde on this end. All right. I can't do much with this so far. But if I turn the aldehyde into a carboxylic acid, maybe I could do something with that. So I'm going to go in this direction. All right. So I'm going to use Jones, turn the car, uh, aldehyde into a carboxylic acid, and that's not going to do anything with this ketone, which is good. And then from there, um, I can turn this OH into a better leaving group by making that an ester. So I'll react that with ethanol, turn that into an ester, and now I have a good leaving group. If I add base to this now, I can get rid of this leaving group, but there's several alpha hydrogens that a base could remove. So let's take a look at the different alpha hydrogens I have. I have these three, I have these two, and I have these two. If I removed either of these alpha hydrogens, all right, this could attack this carbonyl. But if it did, it would form a one, two, three, four-membered ring, which wouldn't be very stable. And same thing as if I removed these alpha hydrogens and attacked this carbonyl carbon. So the only thing uh, that would really lead to a stable product is if I removed these alpha hydrogens and this attacked this carbonyl, and then I would have a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring, and I could kick off this group and form something that looks like this a six membered ring with two carbonyls. Now I'm starting to look something like this. All right. So this gives me the idea that if I have two carbonyls adjacent to each other, again, I could use a base, remove these alpha hydrogens, and do a Michael addition. 
So I'm going to add a conjugated ketone, all right, with one, two, three, four carbons. That matches what I want in this product, one, two, three, four carbons. And that would actually give me a six-membered ring with two carbonyls. So now I have an idea that actually those rings should have been like that before I removed those oxygens with reduction. So working back in the forward direction, let's figure out uh, what, what steps we need. The first step is going to be radical bromination. So I'm going to add bromine with light or heat. Uh, the next step is going to be elimination. I want to make sure that I form the more uh, substituted double bond. So I'm going to use sodium methoxide, which doesn't have much steric hindrance. All right. From there, to do ozonolysis, I'm going to use ozone at negative 78 degrees along with this. Uh, next, we want to use Jones to turn that aldehyde into a carboxylic acid. From there, we want to use a base to remove these alpha hydrogens. I'm going to use NaOET just so that we can, sodium methoxide, just so that we can avoid um, doing hydrolysis if I used sodium hydroxide. All right, and then I'll go ahead and throw some of that in ethanol. And then the next step, we get this. We want to do a Michael addition. So again, I'm going to need a base here. I'll go ahead and use, to be consistent, the same base. Next step, we did Michael addition. Again, we need to add a base to have an attack there. So these are kind of all the same step. And then lastly, to remove these carbonyls, uh, we have several choices, but let's go ahead and use a Wolf-Kirchner reduction and heat. And that's how we take a cyclopentane and turn it into two six-numbered rings.